welcome. Today we are going to get into Terence Howard and the theories, his theories of the universe and mathematics and the flower of life and things that he speaks about. So first of all, I do want to say that I am an advocate for anyone that challenges the mainstream way of thinking, challenges, you know, mainstream conventions in pursuit to, you know, get to the truth. And, you know, that's, that's commendable. What I think you have to be careful of though is when you challenge these things but you don't have you know enough evidence to prove that your way is better than the other way because again until proven everything is just theories everything is just explanations like i could come up with a really cool explanation of how certain you know phenomena in the universe works but until i can prove it and model it and then start to predict things it doesn't mean much okay so this, this is the thing because this channel is about generational excellence right Pro providing the next generation with more knowledge wisdom and opportunities than you had okay and the problem with this is that there are going to be people who listen to what he says and take it for you know as absolute why because you're going these people are going to be pre-programmed to believe that you know the world is against them the government is hiding secrets from them and they don't want the government doesn't want them to know the truth and you know maybe there is some truth in that in this world but what i'm trying to get out here is the idea of just blindly believing things without doing the research for yourself okay and there are so many people that do that and the, the point is like if you can't do the research for yourself right when you hear this and then start talking about it what are you doing you're basically just regurgitating information with no actual fundamental understanding and on his point of view so he he has some theories in mathematics saying you know uh, one times one should be two and then he's talking about the square root of two should be one right and we're going to get into that today but the point is when he says this he doesn't explain why conventional mathematics thinks that way he just kind of says, you know, it's wrong and you've been misled, but he doesn't, he doesn't then explain the logic behind it. When it comes to his theories, it's, it's not the clearest as to why his one times one theory equaling two is related to his whole theories about, you know, the flower of life and how it ties in. But more importantly, like I said, there's not enough evidence to predict this stuff. Uh, and and model this stuff and he, he maybe he will argue he's trying to patent you know put a patent on all his um work and stuff like that but again until we see that solid proof we can't say we can't take it as certain for example what do i mean by this let me get a bit more clearer right if i have a, a mathematical theory right that i believe is better than current mainstream mathematics then what do i have to do well, simply, I have to show that those theories can, well, either more accurately predict the uh, whatever the phenomenon is we're trying to predict more accurately than conventional mathematics, and they get you results that are truer. So I have to, you know, model it, run simulations or whatever, do the experiments to then prove that this way of thinking or this this type of mathematics is actually better and allows us to propel things further okay and go further in you know whatever our scientific endeavors are okay so again this this is the problem is the the main point that i want to get across in this video is just blindly kind of believing things because they fit a narrative that you uh believe in that you're you're going with you know for whatever you know social conditions you have in your brain and this is why in generational excellence we need to really question ourselves question everything and question ourselves and question why we believe things why we think certain ways because it could be programming and conditioning okay and let me tell you this if i wanted to control a society i wouldn't try to make everyone think the same way right when you when you create divides what do you do you just fuel both sides of the divides so i, I put add more fuel to the fire of people who think this way and more fuel to the fire people who think this way and control what exactly they fight over do you, do you get what i'm saying that's that's the smart way to do it okay so this is why you need to question everything and think for yourself and normally what you find is when there's the two extremes you know the two extreme extremities of thought the truth 
normally lies somewhere in between that okay and this is what we're doing but i think it could be a uh, some time right now we could take some time to just explain the conventional mathematics and why one times one is one in conventional mathematics as opposed to being two in the way that terence house said and we're also going to get into why the square root of two is not one okay so let's do this So here's my screen here, right? I'm going to share my screen with you. I've also I'm also going to be putting up some screenshots of Terence Howard book book within the um within the video. So he's he's actually has this whole book on a website called tcotlc.com. So you can look in there and view the whole book for yourself if you want to. So essentially he's saying there's a loop that you get caught up into, right? And I want to show you that this loop, if you follow exactly the same pattern, right? If you follow exactly the same pattern, this loop can occur multiple times, not just with using root two. Okay. So he says this, if you take the square root of two, right? In conventional maths, it equals, you're going to get 1.4, 1, 4, right? Something like that. 1.414 something along those lines and he tells you to cube it or multiply it by two so 1.414 cubed or multiply it by two right so 1.414 times two yeah so when you do both of these you get an answer of two point Eight, I'm using the wrong pen. Two point eight two eight, right? Uh, where's the actual pen gone? Sorry. Eight two eight, right? You get the point. Two point eight two eight. Then he's telling you to divide it by two, and you get so that two point eight two eight two eight. Divide that by two, and you get one point four one four right and he's saying you get caught up in this loop and this loop should not exist basically he's saying this loop should not exist um, and if you do the same with any other number you don't get the loop and what I'm trying to tell you now is actually if you do exactly the same in terms of if you follow exactly the same pattern you will get this loop okay and we can do this with any number but for to make it easy we will do root 9 okay root 9 as we know equals 3 right so if you cube this number 3 cubed equals 27 now here's the point right 27 now he says he says you can either cube it or times it by two. But in this, to follow exactly the same convention, we can't times it by two. We have to times it by nine. Do you understand? So we can do this or three times nine, which equals 27. A bit smoother. You see that? 27. And then if we now take this result, 27, and we divide it by nine, what do we get? We get three, which then puts us in the same loop, three, 27, three, that we were getting here, 1.414, 2.828, 1.414. It's the same loop if we follow the pattern correctly. Okay, and then let's just go over it, you know, algebraically in the sense, use, using that rule. So the rule is, root x right equals x if you follow his steps doing it the correct way to actually get in this loop for all numbers right root x equals x okay so x cubed now this is where we need to explain a little bit about certs in maths because so essentially x cubed is x 
times x times x. Okay, so x times x times x is not to be confused with free x, okay? Equilim free x, this is incorrect. It's not to be confused with that and when we times like this, right, using thirds, what there's a rule, okay, there's a rule in thirds that says a to the power n plus a to the power m equals, sorry, not plus, times, that's the times there. Let me rub this out. Let's not make any mistakes here. Times, right, is the same as a to the power n plus m, right? So what does this mean for this scenario here? Essentially, when you have just x on its own, this is the same as x to the power one times x to the power one times x to the power one, right? Which is equal to x to the power one plus one plus one, right? Which is equal to x cubed, okay? So if we keep following the rule now, so we essentially have x cubed over x squared based on like our, the last example that we used. Yeah. We can use another rule for this. So when we have a to the power n divided by, right, a to the power m, this is the same as a to the power n minus m, right? So when we use this on this equation here, this is the same as x to the power 3 minus 2, which is the same as x to the power 1, or in other words, just x. So you can see how the loop still occurs, right? If we do it correctly, we can't use, we can't always divide it by two each time. We have to actually use the number that's here, if you get what I'm saying, to, to make that loop complete and to complete, make that, sorry, I should say, to make that loop continuous for whatever number we decide to choose. And you can try it for yourself, try it with the number five, you know, um, or, or, you know, five squared, should I say, and you, you'll get the same, you'll get stuck in the same loop that Terence is talking about if you do it correctly, not if you do it with number two, okay? So, again, this is just what I wanted to get into. It's like, the way I see it is, you have to at least understand the conventional maths or what conventional maths is saying before you try to prove it wrong or before you try to try to say this is incorrect because otherwise you, you don't even know what you're saying is incorrect, if you get what I mean. So, again, Again, to, to one, to prove a new theory, right? You have to be able to model it more accurately and predict it more accurately than current conventions, right? And to say something is wrong, you have to understand what the wrong thing is saying to understand if it's wrong or not. And the problem I have with Terence's approach is that he hasn't really done that. He hasn't really broken down the conventional maths or explained why the conventional maths is wrong, if you get what I'm saying. And so he just says you're misled and things work this way. But even again, he doesn't, we don't fully get to see his mathematics applied into the different universal phenomena that he's talking about. Okay. So right now it's just talk. And again, like I said, I'm not hating on this. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I say, I, I applaud people who want to go out and uh, d d disrupt, you know, conventional ways of thinking. I think that's the way forward. We have to do that if we want to make new breakthroughs and break the boundaries of, you know, the hum that humanity has reached. Okay. But we have to do it in with a generational excellence focused mindset. And we have to do things properly before we make, make claims and things like that, you know, and we have to actually take the time for ourselves to understand and read things for ourselves. So anything you watch, even the stuff that I'm saying, just think for yourself. 
do the research, do the actual research for yourself and see where things originate from, see where they come from, see if you can work it out for yourself using your knowledge. And with that being said, this video is getting a bit long, but we're going to leave it like that. Let me know in the comments what you think and I will see you in the next one.